Hi, my name is David Kelsey, and this is a video where we'll cover some exercises um, that apply to the concepts in Lecture 2 of my Critical Thinking course. So uh, this first set of examples, what we're trying to do is determine um, what the premise or premises and the conclusion of the argument stated uh, are. Okay, so the first uh, <coughs> exercise here says he got an A in the course, therefore he must have gotten an A on the final exam. Um, the therefore is always going to be a conclusion indicator. And what it will say is that uh, what follows that therefore will be the conclusion of an argument, so then what precedes it will be the reason for that conclusion. So here our conclusion is that he must have gotten an A on the final exam, and the premise is that uh, he got an A in the course. Okay. Our next example, it says, it must have rained recently for there are puddles everywhere. All right. Um, here we have the for indicator, and the for is a reason indicator. So what that does is that says that what follows the for is a reason for what's before it. So there are puddles everywhere is our reason, our premise, and it must have rained recently is our conclusion. Okay. Next it says, there are mushrooms on the lawn and worms crawling around. So you must be overwatering, okay? In this case, you have the so indicator, which is a conclusion indicator. And so that means that your uh, claim, you must be watering, is the conclusion of our argument here. The premises then are, there are mushrooms on the lawn and worms crawling around, okay? Um, next example, it says, Jones won't plead guilty to a misdemeanor and if he won't plead guilty, then he'll be tried on a felony charge. Therefore, he will be tried on a felony charge. Uh, in this case, we have the therefore indicator. That's key here. It says, therefore, he will be tried on a felony charge. And that's the conclusion of our argument, that he'll be tried on a felony charge. The premises are that Jones won't plead guilty to a misdemeanor, first. And then secondly, what follows the and, it says, if he won't plead guilty, then he'll be tried on a felony charge. So here we have two premises uh, and, and a conclusion. Um, the next example, it says, Jose is taller than Bill, and Bill is taller than Margaret. Therefore, Jose is taller than Margaret. In this example, again, we have that therefore indicator. So that tells us that Jose is taller than Margaret is our conclusion. Our premises then would be Jose is taller than Bill. And secondly, Bill is taller than Margaret. Okay? All right, so that is our first set of examples. Um, our next example here, it says, Believe in God? Yes, of course I do. The universe couldn't have arisen by chance, could it? Besides, I read the other day that more and more physicists believe in God based on what they're finding out about the Big Bang and all that other stuff. Okay? Now, this is an interesting one because straight away you see this kind of claim, Believe in God? Yes, of course I do. That actually is the conclusion of this uh, argument here, that um, yes, I believe in God, right? Um, or uh, yes, uh, God exists, I think maybe is, is a better way to put um, what the conclusion is. Uh, so the conclusion is, is that God exists, and the, um, <clears throat> the premises here seem to be uh, what, two of them, right? Uh, the universe couldn't have arisen by chance, is the first one, right? That's suggested by this question in the what third sentence there, the universe couldn't have arisen by chance, could it? And then the second premise that says, besides, I read the other day that more and more physicists believe in God based on what they're finding out about the Big Bang and that, uh, all that stuff. So the second premise has something to do with uh, the fact that more and more physicists believe in God. So you have the conclusion that God exists and the premises are that uh, the universe couldn't have arisen by chance and then secondly, more and more physicists believe in God. Okay. Uh, our, our next example here, it says, Sean is going to the party with Mary, so she won't be going alone. Okay? And uh, you have, again, your indicator word here is so. And uh, a so, what it does is it tells us that what follows the so is a reason, uh, or sorry, is the conclusion, and what is before the so is the reason for that, that conclusion. So then our conclusion here is that she won't be going alone, and our reason our premise is that Sean is going to the party with Mary. Okay. Next example, it says Michael should just go ahead and get a new car 
The one he's driving is junk. Also, he has a new job and can afford a new car. In this case, our first sentence there, Michael should just go ahead and get a new car. That statement made there, that declaration is our conclusion. The reasons here are that he's the one he's driving is junk, right? The car he's driving is junk. And then secondly, he has a new job and can afford it, okay? Uh, the next example, it says, if she goes to Vegas, she'll wind up at the slot machines. And if she winds up at the slot, she'll lose everything. So she's, so going to Vegas means she'll lose everything. So here again, it's a bit more complex. And uh, we have uh, actually, I think, two premises. Uh, but you'll notice that the, con the conclusion indicator, again, we see is so, right? It says, so going to Vegas means she'll lose everything. And that, in fact, is our conclusion. Going to Vegas means she'll lose everything. Our, reason he our reasons here are two. One, if she goes uh, to Vegas, she'll wind up at the slot machines. And then secondly, if she winds up at the slot, she'll lose everything, OK? So we have two premises in favor of that conclusion that uh, going to Vegas means she'll lose everything. Now, this set of argument, or sorry, exercises we're going to look at is about how to pick out a deductive argument on the one hand from an inductive argument on the other. And if you'll remember, deductive arguments, what they do is that those are the valid and sound ones that have that kind of necessary connection between the premises on the one hand and the conclusion on the other. And uh, the inductive arguments on the other uh, just support the likelihood or the probability uh, that the conclusion is true, right? So even if the premises are true in an inductive argument, it only guarantees that the conclusion is likely uh, to be true, right? If you'll remember to another indicator of inductive arguments, it has to do with the fact that inductive arguments make usually kind of prediction, right? They look into the future. They're kind of like guesses, right? Okay, so given all of that then, uh, our first example it says, you must be a member of the union because almost every person working here is. Now, the indicator here that this is an inductive argument is that it says almost every person working here is a member of the union. And so it concludes then that you must be also a member of the union. But notice that because it's just that almost every person working here is a member of the union, then of course, it might not be that you are as well, right? You could be one of the ones that isn't. And so that's why this would be then an inductive argument. Okay, so our next example uh, says, since some apples are crunchy and green and all apples are fruit, it follows that some fruit is crunchy and green. <clears throat> Here, we have a deductive argument. And the reason, again, is that with deductive arguments, and you should be able to see that with this one, the conclusion of a deductive argument is the only possible conclusion, the only possible claim that could follow from the premises. Nothing else will, will do. So here, take the premises, right? Some apples are crunchy and green, and all apples are fruit. What has to follow is that some fruit are crunchy and green, namely the apples, right? And that's the conclusion of our argument. So that's what makes this one deductive, okay? Um, the next example, it says, the figure he drew has only three sides, but every square has four, so the figure he drew isn't a square. This one is also, again, deductive. And you can see why, because, again, given the figure he drew has only three sides, and also that every square has four, it just has to follow that it can't be, what he drew can't be a square, because it's got only the three sides, right? And so, because that conclusion necessarily has to follow, it's a deductive argument. The next example, it says, every day this week it has been chilly in the morning and hot in the afternoon. So it's likely going to be today as well. And again, you can see here that phrase likely, right? And again, with inductive arguments, that's what we deal with, likelihood. And, uh, you know, think too about weather, right? Weather in general, changes all the time, right? Even though it's been chilly in the morning all week and hot in the afternoon, even if it's been like that for several weeks, today might be very different, right? And so there's no guarantee that today will be uh, the same, okay? And so this is again an inductive argument. Now, uh, again, we have uh, some more examples of uh, deductive and inductive arguments. So the next one here is, 
Um, he was at the party and one of only a few left at the time the money was stolen. Plus he's broke right now, so he must have stolen it, right? Here our conclusion is that he must have stolen this money, okay? But notice that it says, the first claim there says, he was at the party and one of only a few left at the time the money was stolen. So notice that there was a few people besides him at the party at the time the money was stolen. And so therefore, he might not have done it, right? So therefore, these premises only support the likelihood of this conclusion. And so this is an inductive argument, right? Okay, the next example, it says, no trees are animals and only animals have organs. So trees don't have organs, right? Now, this is, again, a deductive argument. And again, you can see why, because the conclusion must follow from those premises, right? If no trees are animals and only animals have organs, then how can trees have organs, right? And that's our conclusion, so that one's deductive. <clears throat> the next example here, it says, almost every time I've um, had coffee after 9 p.m., I am up all night, so I'll probably be up all night if I drink this coffee since it's 10 o'clock, right? Now, this is, again, an inductive argument. Why this is inductive is because, again, it's that kind of prediction. It's forward-looking, right? You take this evidence from the past here, right? All these times in the past when you've had coffee after 9 p.m., you've been up all night. And then you're applying that to this night, right? If I drink coffee now. But, of course, just because it's happened before, it doesn't necessarily have to happen now, right? This time could be different. So this is, again, a case where the conclusion only follows with likelihood from the premises, and so that's why it's inductive, okay? Uh, the next example, it says, this is salt water because it's from the ocean, and ocean water is salt water. This is, again, a deductive argument. The conclusion here is that this is salt water, and the reasons are that it's from the ocean, and ocean water is salt water, right? If this water is from the ocean, and ocean water is salt water, then this water has to be salt water, right? And so that conclusion has to follow from those premises, and that's what makes it deductive. Okay, so the last uh, couple exercises here, what we're going to do is try to find the unstated implied premise. Now, in, 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 uh, when you're trying to do this, what you're trying to do is connect the dots, if you will. You're trying to connect the, the stated premise to the stated conclusion, and there's got to be a link between them, and you've got to supply that, right? Okay, so in the first example, what we're going to do, the first uh, set, set of examples, these first four here, we're going to try to make, by way of an implied premise, we're going to try to make an argument that's valid. Okay, so that's the idea with uh, the connection between the premises and conclusion that's necessary, right? Okay, so it says in the first one, North Korea is threatening to use its nuclear weapons so we can attack it preemptively. Okay, so the conclusion of this argument here is that we can attack North Korea preemptively. The premises are that, or sorry, the premise that's stated here is that North Korea is threatening to use its nuclear weapons. Now, if I was going to make this argument valid and make the connection between that premise and the conclusion necessary, I would need something that says something like uh, any country that's threatening to use its nuclear weapons can be attacked preemptively. Right? And so if we have North Korea is threatening to use its weapons, uh, its nuclear weapons, and then adding to that something like uh, any country that's um, threatening to do that, we can attack preemptively, it would then have to follow that we can attack North Korea preemptively. So that unstated premise there is something like any country that's threatening to use its nuclear weapons, we can attack preemptively. Okay? The next example, it says, she's a liberal since she's pro-choice, right? This one would be something like, right, if, if our um, conclusion is that she's a liberal and then our premise is that she's pro-choice, I have to connect those somehow to make it a necessary connection, right? Uh, that conclusion has to follow. So it has to be something like anyone that's pro-choice is a liberal, right? That would, that would do the job. The next example says, because the fan is squeaking, it must need oil. Here... The premise is that the fan is squeaking, and the conclusion is that it must need oil. And so to make that connection a necessary one, right, uh, we need something like 
Anytime the fan is squeaking, it needs oil. Okay. Uh, our last example, it says she needs a checkup at the doctor since she hasn't been in years. Right. Now, <clears throat> we have that, again, that since indicator word. And what that means is that she hasn't been to the doctor in years is the reason. And the conclusion here is that she needs a checkup at the doctor. To make that argument then valid, what we need is something that makes that connection a necessary one. Something like, um, if you haven't been to the doctor in years, you have to or you must or you necessarily uh, need a checkup at the doctor. Something like that. Okay. Okay, well, our last set of exercises here for today has to do again with finding the implied premise. But what we want to do here is we want to find the implied premise that makes the argument not valid, but strong, inductively strong, right? And so inductive arguments, again, what they do is they connect the premise to the conclusion in a way that applies probability, right? So the premises make the conclusion more likely. So somehow we've got to do that with our implied premise, okay? So let's look at the first example then. There are puddles everywhere, so it probably rained earlier, right? Now to make this connection one of likelihood, what you usually want to do is use something like that, right? It's likely or it's usually like this, right? So what I would maybe plug in here, right? The conclusion is that it's probably rained earlier. The premise is that there's puddles everywhere. And so what we might plug in to make this connection likely is something like, um, in most cases, when there's puddles everywhere, it's rained earlier, right? In most cases. In our second example, it says the battery is likely weak because the lights are dim and blinking. Okay, so the reason here is that the lights are dim and blinking. The conclusion that that supports is that the battery is likely weak. And again, what we need is something that makes that conclusion more likely given that premise. And so what we want is uh, something like, uh, in most cases, or usually maybe, uh, when the lights are dim and blinking, the battery is weak. That would probably do, do the job. Uh, the next example, it says, I took vitamin C and my cold disappeared. Thus, I think I'll do that from now on. So here we would want, again, um, something that makes that conclusion more likely. Something like, if I took vitamin C and my cold did disappear, then probably what I'll do in the future is take the vitamin C uh, when I've got a cold. Right? Okay, the last example, it says, I'm going to win this one as I have lost 10 games in a row, right? So you're going to win because you've lost 10 games in a row. Here again, you need something that makes that conclusion more likely, something like um, probably or likely, or in most cases, when I've lost 10 in a row, I win the next one, right? That would, that would probably do it, so. Okay, well, that's it for these uh, exercises, uh, in, all applying the concepts from lecture two and critical thinking. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and um, <clears throat> we'll see you next time.